WJAB, your smooth jazz and cool vocal station from the campus of Alabama A&M University in Huntsville. Good afternoon and welcome to Community Spotlight. I'm your host, Erica Fox, and today we're talking about an educational area that is continuing to grow in big numbers, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Please welcome to Community Spotlight, Dr. Chance Glenn, Dean of the College of Engineering, Technology, and Physical Sciences here at Alabama A&M University. Welcome to WJB and Community Spotlight. Good afternoon, Erica. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm, I'm really honored to be here, so let's talk about it. Most definitely. But first, you're new mm-hmm. to the family members of the A&M family. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, well I'm kind of new, kinda and new. I'll explain what I mean. Okay. Um, I started off my educational uh, career here at Alabama A&M. I attended here for uh, three years. Uh, I transferred at the time I was I was attending. They did not have a uh, engineering program, mm-hmm. and uh, I was co-oping at the time. Wonderful co-op program that continues to remain here today. Um, and I co-opted uh, up with the government in uh, the D.C. area. So at that point, uh, I had to make a decision, and uh, the decision was to. Uh, transfer to the University of Maryland mm-hmm. and get my uh, finish off my undergraduate degree. So not only did I have three years here, my brother went here a couple of years before me, and I have two sisters who attended Alabama A&M really? well before me. Wow. Uh, and I'll make that clear because they're <laughs> older than I am. Um, but but um, so I'm familiar with this area. I grew up in Alabama, mm-hmm. and um, so so it it actually is to me kind of fitting to come back here mm-hmm. uh, after those many years. I won't say how many, <laughs> but uh, to come back here and to uh, join the engineering, uh, technology, and physical sciences college here, mm-hmm. uh, and and to do what we're doing. So, what part of Alabama are you from? Uh, I grew up in a town called Dothan, Mm -hmm. down in the southeastern corner. I I was actually born in New Jersey, and our family transferred, transplanted, I should say, Mm -hmm. uh, down to uh, to Dothan. It was eight of us, eight children, who came and was raised by my grandmother, um, uh, and essentially grew up supported by her Social Security check, if you can believe that. Mm -hmm. And the remarkable thing was that all of us, and I was the youngest of that group, all of us went to college. And um, I ended up starting off here and did did what I did. So it was was an interesting uh, transition. We were growing up down there in the... um, you can imagine in the in the seventies, late sixties, seventies, right off civil rights uh-huh. uh, movements down in the south. But we were from the north, so not only did we have the the kind of the racial component, but uh-huh. we also, um, you know, even uh, the issue of being northerners down in the south was a, was an issue. So, but we got through it, and I think because we had a big family, uh-huh. uh, that. We were our own company. We were our own friends and, and, and everything. So that kind of helped us get through it. That was enough for you to take care of each other. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. And grandmommy definitely, I think grandmommies definitely yeah. know how to do yeah. that. And with eight, mine had 13, I think, mm. all together wow. um, with my mom and her brothers and sisters. Yeah. So in your younger years, when it came to school, what were your favorite subjects? Well, you know, it was interesting. I was one of those kind, number one, that I loved. Star Trek, those yes. kind of shows, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but I always was tearing everything apart, taking everything apart, uh-huh. uh, trying to figure out how it worked. But I also could fix anything. So sometimes I didn't, didn't even know how I did it. It just was work. After I fiddled around with it, it started working. Um, but I was one of those kind of people. And my oldest brother um, told me that, you know, you're interested in electrical things, electronics. 
engineering, electrical engineering is what you ought to be looking at. Uh And uh, I don't know how he knew because our counselors at the time weren't very good at the school I went to. I had that Uh, too. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so they just kind of say, well, yeah, you could do this. But but they don't really give you didn't give me too much guidance. But Uh my brother kind of pointed me in that direction. And um, so I uh, I looked at electrical engineering. Uh, I came up here because my brother was here and I wanted to play basketball and I got offered a uh, uh, academic scholarship as well. So I said, let me come here. And then I, you know, I transferred, as I mentioned before. Uh But that's how I got interested in that whole area was just, you know, a kind of a knack for it. It's a common theme you hear in kind of engineering types. uh, Really? You know, have that you know, you want to know how things work. Mm-hmm. You can take things apart just to understand them and, and all that. Yeah. So he pl- kind of planted that seed. But mm-hmm. at the same time, if somebody asked you what you wanted to be when you mm-hmm. grew up, were you thinking well, electrical or mechanical mm-hmm. engineering? Were you thinking that? Interestingly enough, I think one of the things I re- know I said was I wanted to be a college professor one day. Really? Yeah. From the, cause I just uh-huh. like the idea of um, giving knowledge out mm-hmm. and, and lecturing and talking and things like that. So I think that was one of it. Um, I started taking electronics in high school. Uh, they had a vocational type school that you could take some of these different subjects. I took electronics. I was very good at it and could make and wire and make anything work. Mm-hmm. So it continued to feed into that whole thing. Um, but, you know, to go on and to do a master's degree and a Ph.D. and, you know, I, it it just was more so one thing led to another. Uh, not so much that was a plan from the start. Uh-huh. So yeah. you went to college and you basically ended up doing what you wanted to be when you grew yeah. up. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Uh, you know, I had some um, side side roads along the way. Um, I like to do a lot of things. I'm one of those kind of people that think they can do everything and anything. And, and I try it and not afraid to fail at stuff. So... I ended up doing a lot of different things. Um, and uh, bef- so before I joined the faculty uh, at uh, where my prior university was, the Rochester Institute of Technology. And forgive me if I'm jumping ahead. You can kind of tell me how you want to okay, go That's okay. Go with ahead. It. We'll work it. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, but before I, 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 prior to that, I had a company and, and uh, we started this company based on some, some uh, technology and development that I been doing when I was working with the government when I mentioned I did a co-op turned into a full-time job with the government then Uh we took some technology and formed a company and okay before you get to that let let me ask after you finished graduate school Mm -hmm. and I have to read this verbatim it said Mm -hmm. you began designing quote microwave and radio frequency devices Mm -hmm. and it was for defense related applications now was this for military purposes yeah that that's actually what i was mentioning i was with the uh uh, the army research lab up Mm -hmm. in maryland is where i took my first job and a matter of fact the co-op opportunity came through a an alumnus from here Uh, his name is ezekiel salter um he was working with this same army research lab uh, at the time, and I'm not really. I think he was from Dothan too. So he somehow we connected, and that co-op opportunity came through his interaction. Uh-huh. So that's that's where I was, and 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 even as an undergraduate doing a co-op, I was working on, uh, and this was you know microwave. Um, technology, essentially just really high frequency de- uh, design, mm-hmm. um, communications type of things, and, and other military uh, t- applications that, that, that the, the Army was interested in, but communications and things like that. So I was doing that even before I got my undergraduate degree, and wow. I was even, um, I had published some things and, and gave was going, giving presentations at major uh, conferences, both nationally and internationally, before I even graduated from the University of Maryland, which mm-hmm. was my undergraduate. I continued on uh, at um, Johns Hopkins for the master's and Ph.D. Uh, in electrical engineering and stayed with uh, the Army Research Lab through that time. 
It was a really great uh, situation because they have a um, they had a fellowship program that paid for all of this, paid the full tuition, and paid me while I went to school. And That's even, a win-win situation. Know, and gave me time off to do it. Wow. So I don't know if they still do that. And all they required was for you to work for them for some time after you finished. Mm-hmm. And, and I did that. Um, so anyway, it was it was a good situation, and, and that's how I was able to do that. So you wore several hats at uh, mm-hmm. Rochester Institute yeah. of Technology, and you got your tenure while you were there from 2003 yeah. to just before you came here. Right. Um, so after I, uh, uh, we, we, we um, basically sold the technology of the company and dissolved the company I had, um, at 2003 I joined the faculty at, at RIT. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... That was a situation. It was almost like, you know, like a lark. I'm sitting in the office. I said, uh, you know, because always in the back of my mind, I'm saying I, I wanted to uh, 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 teach at the university level. I'm flipping through a IEEE magazine. I saw the ad for it, and I said, oh, let me put an application in. So I did, and the application led to a phone call, and a phone call led to a visit, and a visit led to a appointment, and then uh, I stayed there and got tenured. And mm-hmm. I, I came in there um, because I had so much uh, experience in industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I came in as an associate professor, and so when I went up for tenure and promotion, I was promoted to a full professor, and so that way I kind of accelerated my career I guess. So why leave? Why leave? Mm -hmm. Well I think the most good that you can do on administrative side is um, as you go higher and higher you can do a lot of good that's what I meant to say Mm -hmm. and you have the ability to influence uh, change and to influence the direction of a lot of young people's lives. Now, you know, after it's all said and done, I can talk about all the stuff I want to do and accomplish and everything, but as an academic administrator and as a faculty member or anyone here in the higher education system, our mission is to provide opportunities for young people. Mm. And to me, as an administrator at this level, as a dean, as a provost, as a president, uh, is it chairs? And you can make those kind of decisions that impacts a lot of people's lives for the better. If you think about what we do here at Alabama A and M, uh, especially as our mission and mandate as an HBCU, uh-huh. we are transforming young people's lives f- forever. Uh, even I can look at myself. Um, you know, I'm growing up basically very poor in, in, in Dalton, Alabama. Uh-huh. But it was education that made the difference and then opportunity to get that education, you know, instead of a place same in Alabama where we had a governor who was barring the door uh-huh. to deny us education. We now have a situation where all who will can come and get it. Mm-hmm. So we have the we have the, the opportunity to to give to to give that to change lives. And at this level, that's what I can do. So you ask me why I leave there. Mm-hmm. Well, to be uh, at at um, Rochester, I, I was able to merge to be uh, associate dean for graduate studies. And in that, I had a view of the entire campus because all the graduate programs were all over the uh, the campus, but. Engineering is my heart. Um, the STEM fields is where I really, you know, love uh, to be. Mm-hmm. And this was a great opportunity. And I th- thought it was fitting to come back here. Come back home. Yeah, it's full circle for here. you. Yeah, it was full circle. So, you know, um, I think that was that was the right move to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's wonderful. And it's almost paying it forward. You're coming mm-hmm. back. But you're now with all the things that you've experienced and been had the opportunity to do, yeah. you're coming back. But in order to pay it forward, to give to yeah. these students and be able to work with them, yeah. teach with them, and that. And I, I enjoy talking to the students about that. Uh, I enjoy. I, I like to be able to tell them that I was you, however many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna uh, find out and gonna, tell oh, the it, listeners. It won't be hard to find <laughs> out. Um, but but to say I was you. 
Mm-hmm. I was sitting in those same seats, the same seats up in Carter Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was standing in the same financial aid lines and, and admission lines in Patton Hall and, you know, whatever. I, I, I was you mm-hmm. before. And, you know, whether or not they look at what I'm doing or my career and say that's something they want to emulate or not, it's just that the possibilities, the possibilities are there. Mm-hmm. So. This is Community Spotlight, and I'm talking today with Dr. Chance Glenn. He's dean of the College of Engineering, Technology, and Physical Sciences here at Alabama a University. And your theme for your program mm-hmm. this year is elevation. Mm-hmm. What does that mean for your department? Well, for the entire college, it means we're going to lift up the expectations for our faculty and staff, for our students, for our equipment and facilities, for our interactions, Mm -hmm. for our alumni, uh, for the community. What we do for the community and what we do for the students, and, 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 you know, and I include students in that, we're elevating our expectations. We want more. We expect more. Mm-hmm. We expect a higher place. We're trying to go to a higher place. Now, interestingly, uh, and, I, and I, this kind of came out when we were talking to, uh, with our advisory board, when you elevate something, you can lift it up from the bottom or you can raise it up from the top. Um, if you raise it up from the top, it assumes that where you're trying to go, somebody's already been there and they're trying to bring you up mm. to that point. So that's why it's important and it came out in this advisory board because those are people who are professionals. They've gone through uh, educational systems. They've been successful in their lives and they can help us raise our game, for lack of a better uh, uh, term, mm-hmm. to that higher level. They can help us get there, um, essentially almost pulling us up. Pull you up. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So that that's one way to look at it. But underneath, um, we need everybody. Everybody pushing their weight upward. Mm-hmm. And if we have it, you know, you can have something big and heavy, and if you have something underneath it, you've got to distribute that weight evenly all over in order to raise that up the right way. Mm-hmm. So we need everybody in there lifting uh, to, to, to take us to a higher place. And it doesn't as- make any assumptions about where you were before. Mm-hmm. So it's not any recriminations on whoever was doing something there before I got there or before that. It's saying wherever we are now, we want to raise up to a higher place. I like that. It's yeah. almost um, I'm envisioning like when you go to a restaurant and you have your plate yeah. And they have the lid on top of it. Yeah. When they pull that lid off, it's being exposed. Okay. So it's almost like, okay, if we're pulling you up, yeah. l- let's show you. We're hmm. going to show you. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I don't know if you purposely did that or not, but I, I've been talking to different uh, people around the community, mm-hmm. and they're saying that the one of the best-kept secrets is not – if not the best kept secret in this community is Alabama A and M. We have uh, a fully certified rating one thousand clean room here. We have two particle accelerators here. We have a supersonic wind tunnel here. We have a multiple scanning electron microscopes here. That's just equipment. Then we have faculty members that are world renowned. We have we just had last week a visit that we have every year from a Nobel laureate Mm -hmm. who comes in and gives a lecture. Um, We have alumni who have done tremendous things. And the thing is that in this community, people don't know about it. And we almost act as if we need to stay in the shadows or underneath that cover you're talking about. And when you when you pop that lid that you're talking about, all the steam comes out mm-hmm. and you can smell the the wonderful aroma that comes from the food, if it's good food, yes. uh, that, that comes out. This is what we need to do. We need to pop the lid mm-hmm. on this and let people know what we have here. I'm hoping that. You know, this this radio show 
uh, some other things we're trying to do will help to do that. Well, that's but, what we're here for, and yeah. that's what we're doing. Yeah. Talk about a few of the various programs that students can choose from. Hmm. Okay, well, we have, have a number. At the undergraduate level, um, starting with our engineering stuff, we have uh, electrical engineering, we have mechanical engineering, and we have um, civil engineering. Uh, then we have a program called Materiel Engineering. Now, I, I'm emphasizing the word Materiel. Uh -huh. uh, those who are in the defense sector will, will recognize that word. Uh, but that's at a master's level. Now, I want to emphasize this because I'm hoping our, the listeners who hear this, um, the, the, particularly the people in this community, uh, the, the, the Huntsville community in and around the arsenal and all of the, the companies and, and, and the uh, NASA and, and, and other uh, organizations that are here and vibrant in this community. Um, this is a program that professionals who are at a, have their bachelor's degrees, they can be involved. It's an engineering uh, type program, but it's focused on uh, logistics and supply chain management and the kind of things that are critical to that particular industry. Uh -huh. So, and see, again, that's another thing that people didn't even know was here. Uh -huh. And so this, in my opinion, that program should be bursting at the seams given the community that we have here. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to offer some of those things online. Uh, we're going to try to establish a presence on the arsenal so that uh, professionals who are there can take courses. We want to start looking at uh, weekend and evening type offerings to mm -hmm. make it more convenient for uh, students uh, th that are non-traditional. Okay. Um, and just to, just to go on, um, we also have computer science, and we have an a undergraduate and a master's degree in computer science. Um, then there's physics, chemistry, mathematics, uh, construction management. Also, phys physics program has a master's in applied physics and a Ph.D. in okay. applied physics. Mm -hmm. So you can get a lot, but we're not done yet either. We talked about elevation. Uh, in the very near future, we're looking at starting programs in biomedical engineering, in um, nuclear engineering, and uh, we're also looking at environmental uh -huh. engineering. And we're starting to establish some relationships with Georgia Tech, with the University of Tennessee. Uh, we're also going to be talking with um, uh, UAB and UAH uh -huh. to, to establish some uh, programs of things like BSMS, for example, which will allow you to, in five years, walk away with a bachelor's and a master's degree. At the same time? At the same time. Wow. Uh, so these are, these are all opportunity is done in other places. Uh, we can do it here. And... Um, I think that th that's what we're after. You all yeah. are stepping up your game over there. Yeah, we're there. stepping up the game. We're elevating, we're elevating our mm -hmm. the, the game. That's right. I love that. Um, you have several patents that have been approved and mm. are in the works. What are some of those? Mm. Well, uh, I think the most, some of the most interesting ones I'll, I'll talk about. Is some of them are mundane. <laughs> and, I, and I shouldn't say a, 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 a large number. It's not that many. But um, one of the two things I'm still trying to keep my toe into technical things just because, you know, I know I've gotten onto administrative te track, but mm -hmm. I'm still doing some, some technical things. I've been working in this area. Uh, it's called chaos. Uh, it's it's basically a kind of a physics and mathematics type of thing where you get this weird behavior. It turns out, for example, the the weather is chaotic. It's a chaotic system. Uh -huh. um, you'll see a lot of things in nature that are chaotic systems. Well, I came up with some ways to take these physical type of properties and use them for engineering purposes. And so I, for example... Um, uh, developed a new modulation technique, which which modulation is about how do you put data onto the radio. We're like we're talking now. This is a digital. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's part of this is digital because mm -hmm. um, people can get this on the web. Right. All right. So part of it's digital. Um, how do you take our voice and turn it into a digital stream and send it? 
over a line, over the air, what have you. There's, there's a whole science behind that and engineering behind it. Modulation is part of that. Mm-hmm. And there's a certain way you do it, and there's so much information you can put there. So I came up with a way to increase the amount of data that you can put on a given line. Wow. And it allows you to go faster, mm-hmm. t- things like that. So that's one thing. And then I have some image processing stuff that's a new I call it D-transform that I developed. So I'm still giving papers. I have a paper I'm presenting out in um, uh, an, an SPIE conference out in, in February in California. Um, so, you know, I try to stay in it as much as I can. You have a lot of sidebars. Yeah. Now, there's one I'm sure yeah. a lot of people <laughs> don't know about. Okay, I think I know where you're going. Dr. Professor Dean, how do you get nominated for a Grammy? <laughs> how in the world is that even connected, which is probably not, then again, it might be no, modulations I'll, and no, whatnot. I'll tell you exactly how it's connected. How? Creativity. Okay. Because you can create in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. I actually, if, if you go back and talk to the people in Dothan who knew me, they probably would have thought I was a artist. I would be an artist to paint and draw because that's what they knew me for. That's what I used to do. Mm-hmm. Was paint and draw portraits. I had a show. I, I went to the Alabama School of Fine Arts in ninth grade. It's in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a show in, in a museum down there. So people who knew me at that level would have thought I was an artist. Um, then I started singing and and somehow writing songs just started to emerge as I got a little bit older. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but again, it's just creativity. And I think the patents and technology and the computer programs and circuits and all these things that are, you know, develop, it's still just an expression of creativity. It's just what's your instrument. So what's the CD? What's oh, well, the song? Okay, <laughs> Grammy. <laughs> Everybody can't do that every day. No, I'm not, and I'm not. I'm not trying to imply that every, anybody can do it, but I. Um, no, I'm saying that yeah. it's a special thing that yeah. every, everybody's yeah. not able. You yeah. were nominated for a Grammy. That's well, just cool. I, I, back in 1999, um, see, I was a part of a church in Maryland uh, that was very creative church and. What we did was we integrated music and drama and all that with the message, Mm -hmm. you know. And so instead of going out trying to find a song that fits this message here and find, let's find a song here that'll fit what he's going to talk about this time, we end up writing the songs. So it was myself, uh, another uh, good friend of mine named John Waller, uh, who ended up being the one to produce the album for me. Uh, we were writing stuff. So I was a worship leader at the time. Okay. So, so I was a worship leader for the church, and, and we basically founded the church well before that, and it grew into a few thousand people. Uh, still going on down in Columbia, Maryland now, named Bridgeway Community Church. Um, so I wrote a lot of songs, worship-related songs. So at right around 1999 time frame, I got the bright idea to I should record some of these songs. And uh, I did. And um, so it began to go around and perform. And we performed in a lot of nice venues. Uh-huh. Uh, I think the most impressive one was we were at the Kennedy Center. Yes. Um, and um, I, with that, I began to know and get to know people in the music community. I became a member of the National uh, Association for the Recording Arts and... and, and um, so with that, um, I was able to get my CD, which is the, the first one's called The Praise Project, and mm-hmm. the album's called First Fruits. Um, and you could sell up on iTunes. You can check that out. Um, uh, so I was able to get that uh, uh, listened to by those people, and, and, and that's how it ended up getting, getting nominated. That's cool. I still got the book that has it in there. <laughs> uh, I recorded one more called... Um, uh, Jesus is Faithful. It's under my name, Chance Glenn. Jesus mm-hmm. is Faithful. That's up on iTunes as well. But, you know, I did the whole thing. I had an independent record label. I had a radio show that I was doing on a uh, that was uh, uh, syndicated around the country. Um, I had other artists that I helped get started. And I did a lot of stuff because, like I said, I just 
thought I could do everything, so I just started doing it. I love it. That that's a special thing you have under your belt for your hmm. uh, your Vita. You have to put that on the <laughs> Grammy <laughs> yeah. nominated. Yeah, just put it in there. Just I hate we have run out of time. Oh, all I've right. truly enjoyed talking with you. But what is uh, yeah. website or phone number? Okay. Especially people interested in your department that okay. want to get information. Well. Uh, as I was thinking about it, the, right away, the best way, just call us, uh, first of all, 256-372-5560. That's uh, 256-372-5560. That's the office number for the college, uh-huh. College of Engineering, Technology, Physical Sciences. Uh, our website is uh, aamu.edu. That's the general website for the university and you can just search on the College of Engineering and you'll find us. Uh, We also have a Facebook presence that we want to start to uh, get some. So I want everybody who's listening, go on there, like us, and let's see how many uh, members we can get. But it's at A-A-M-U-C-E-T-P-S. Okay. A-A-M-U-C-E-T-P-S, and that's for College of Engineering, Technology, and Physical Sciences. Fabulous. Okay. Social media is a fabulous thing. Yeah, it is, (laughs) and uh, hopefully we can get more interaction that way. So, again, we want more people to know about this special jewels we have up here on on the hill. Most definitely. Dr. Chance Glenn, Dean of the College of Engineering, Technology, and Physical Sciences, here at Alabama a and University, I thank you for coming. And this is just the first of many conversations okay. that we'll have, what's going on over there in your area. Thank you so much for coming by. All right, thank you. This has been Community Spotlight. Thank you all so much for listening and tuning in. Coming your way next, we have an update from NPR News and also the award-winning news magazine, All Things Considered. Have a great day. I'm Erica Fox for Community Spotlight here on WJAB. Have a great day. WJAB, your smooth jazz and cool vocal station from the campus of Alabama A&M University in Huntsville. We were even just a couple days ago. Paulson says some of the decline is a retreat from a rise in stock prices Tuesday in anticipation of a possible Romney victory. That's probably a third of the drop that we're experiencing today. In addition to that, there's immediately now concerns about facing the fiscal cliff. Paulson says there's also some worry that the impact of Superstorm Sandy will put downward pressure on the next round of reports on the U.S. economy. Craig Windham, NPR News, Washington. Before the close on Wall Street, Dow is down 313 points to 12,933. NASDAQ Composite Index.